Now we'll consider what happens when we have a vertical axis of rotation. For example, suppose I want to rotate the parabola y equals x squared around the y-axis now. Well, we can still use disk method and or washer method, but we have to be careful here. We have to consider very carefully. The disks now will be going like this. They will be horizontal disks around a vertical axis. And so what this means, if we want to integrate along the axis of rotation, we're going to have to integrate in terms of y. And this demonstrates a very important principle of disk or washer method, that the variable of integration, whether it's x or y, the variable of integration must be parallel to the axis of rotation. So if the axis of rotation is horizontal, as we've been considering in many of the previous videos, well, then the variable of integration will be x, which is a horizontal variable. But if the axis of rotation is vertical, and we're going to use this method, then the variable of integration has to be y. What this means is we have to take this function and solve it for x in terms of y. That's actually relatively straightforward. x equals square root of y means that we'll be conducting the integral from y equals 0 to whatever this top is. Let's just say that that's y equals 5 at the top. And so the integral will be pi, then an integral from y equals a to y equals b, of r of y squared dy. This is the basic disk method approach. And so here that would be pi times the integral from 0 to 5 of square root of y squared. So that would just be y dy. And then that is the integral that we conduct. Of course, the integral of y dy, that would just give us y squared over 2, evaluated at 5 and 0, and so forth. Now, if we have a region between two functions like this, and we want to integrate around a vertical axis, well, now it gets a little trickier. Now what we're going to have to do is invert each function. So x equals f inverse of y and x equals g inverse of y. Find those two inverses and then it will be the, let's see, in this particular scenario, the g inverse will be the outer radius the f inverse will be the inner radius. So here, it would be an integral, pi times an integral from a to b of the outer x, which is g inverse of y squared minus f inverse of y squared dy. That would be the integral. And then you could imagine if we had an axis that was off the y-axis, so an other vertical line, well, then we'd have to find the inverses and then find the radii measured from that vertical line. So exactly the same as when we have a horizontal line other than the x-axis. In the next video, I will show an example of this. But before I do that, I will just say that often when we have a vertical axis of rotation, we are just not able to use the disk or the washer method the disk of the washer method, use of it is really contingent on our ability to actually find inverses of the individual functions involved. And if we're not able to find the inverses of those functions and express them in terms of y, then we're not able to use the disk or the washer method when we have a vertical axis. And we'll have to resort to something else that we'll talk about in a couple videos.